Welcome back to the channel, guys. And no, it's been a long time. Not really, it's been like a couple days. So if you guys haven't watched the last couple of my videos, we're tearing down the Ford G63 because we blew it up. The rod bearing went, it exploded. So today we're gonna be building it and assembling the motor. But here's a catch. So when I ordered all these parts from Extreme PSI, like these r and billet aluminum racing rods, which I still can't stop looking at these, man. And so I totally forgot and spaced on the thrust washers. Now that we're reusing the thrust washers because it only had about 500 miles, they seem to be in good shape. I don't see anything wrong with them, so we're gonna be reusing them. So real fast breakdown, we are using the stock 2.0 block because we're gonna rev this thing to the moon and we're using the r and aluminum racing rods with the standard OEM brand new crankshaft, man that looks good, with the Weissco 1400 series HD piston. So as making this video right now, we are on a Saturday, so that means we have one week and one day to get everything ready that you guys see here back in here is we're going to be taking the 97 GSX to import face off where we're going to be racing it and hopefully running a 10.5 at 140. Like I said, that's my goal. That's what we're shooting for. So we got to make that happen. So this box is what we were waiting for. It just came in this morning and it has all the piston rings, the oil pump, everything that I need to assemble my Ford G63. And luckily it came in. So let's go ahead and open up this box and see what's inside. Hopefully they sent everything. So in the box, we've got the oil pump and a new water pump. Now there's three boxes here. That's actually the piston ring set. If you're wondering why there's only three, in the last parts ordering I did, I only ordered one. If you guys realize, I have one, two, three, four. So that's four pistons. So I had one piston ring, I have four pistons. So one minus four equals three. So I bought three and hey, we're here. So the first step into assembling the engine, besides cleaning everything, is to check what's called the piston ring end gap. So these are the pistons, and if you guys look kind of carefully, you'll see that it has certain grooves cut out inside the pistons. Well, pistons have piston rings, which the shiny one is the top ring, the blocker one is the second ring, and these little guys are the oil scrapers. Now, all these have a specific gap that we have to set these at inside the engine block. If not, potentially, you could snap a piston piston off in half if this is set wrong. So next, we're gonna install the piston inside its bore by kind of going to the very top, squeezing it in, carefully sticking it down. We're gonna to wanna to take the piston and put it inside about one inch. I usually just line it up with the top of the piston skirt here, like that. So right out of its box, this is a 14 thousandths, and the 14 thousandths barely fits inside the piston ring gap. So right out of the box, these things are way too tiny, and this is gonna be the 24 thousandths that we've gotta make fit. And as you can see, there is no way these are going to fit. So next, we have to file down this piston ring. So there's many ways that you can grind the end gaps down on piston rings. A lot of people use sandpaper. If you wanna do it right and get it perfectly flat, which you have to, is to actually buy one of these piston ring filer tools, and it's a diamond bit that it pretty much, you butt it up against it, and it files it down. So you never wanna to go too much with this because you can always take off some. Once you take off too much, you actually damage the piston ring. Now after I'm done cutting it, I do have about a thousand grit sandpaper that I just kind of get to the edges where I just kind of take off the burrs because once again, you do not want to scratch any of the sides of the cylinder walls like that. So again, make sure the numbers are facing up. Take one of the pistons and stick it about one inch in. So we're at about 17 thousandths now, where it kind of goes in. So we only took a couple thousandths off, but that's perfectly fine because we'll do it again. Like I said, it's always better to go very, very slow in doing this than trying to rush it and make your end gap way too big and ruining the piston ring. Again, we're gonna take our 24 thousandths and kind of stick it in. And if it doesn't go in, which it's not, then of course we gotta grind some stuff down. Now it's always best to go very, very slow, then fast and risk damaging one of the piston rings. So I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Well, I kinda screwed up. For some reason, when I was filing down the first piston ring, I guess I pushed too hard, I got too excited. This is why I said in the beginning, go very, very slow, do not go fast. Well, this is the brand new piston ring. It's destroyed. 
So if you guys can see that monstrous gap there, what I did is I filed it down to 40 thousandths of an inch. I totally screwed it up. I totally ruined it. It was supposed to be at 23 to 24 thousandths. And for some reason, I just pushed too hard. I went way too fast and I just ruined it. Well, obviously a new one wouldn't be here for a couple days. So I decided to use one old piston ring. Now hold on before you start typing into the comments real fast. I know it's new honed with an old ring. I'm hoping that it's gonna seal. It should because I've done a lot of reading. We only had about 500 miles on these piston rings and before that I had great compression. I know that the old rings were mated to the old hones, but we're always gonna give it a shot. With my DSMs, I always experiment and stuff like this happens. Don't think it doesn't because stuff like this always happens and when it does, they don't ever tell you about it and I wanna be completely transparency with you guys and well, to let you guys know I screwed up. But I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. I think we'll be okay. We'll do a compression check to be 100% obviously, but I think we'll be okay. Don't worry guys. Now usually I would never do something like this, but because we have to get this car back in one week and have it ready and tuned to go to import face off, we're gonna give it a shot. Now I'm almost 100% positive that it's gonna seal because one, we have brand new homes so the rings will make its own seal against these brand new homes. So it should have perfect compression. So after the third time of grinding these things down, we're finally at about 24 to 25 thousandths. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do it repeatedly for all four cylinders and then we'll do the second ring. So now that we've got the top ring done, now we're gonna be doing the second ring, which it's the exact same process. But however, the bottom ring, we're actually gonna be shooting for about 27 to 28 thousandths on this. Just, and like I said, just because of the fact that I know we're gonna be running about 45 plus PSI. Now the oil rings are gonna have two small tiny rings. We were shooting for about 18 thousandths on these and right out of the box, they were actually right on spec. Don't try and do it by hand. If you snap a ring, you're just gonna have a bad day. This is gonna go in the second notch of the piston. Same thing with the top ring. Again, make sure the numbers are facing up and we're gonna do the exact same thing. This one goes on the very top grooves. So now we have one piston assembled. So now we're gonna do this exact same thing what we did to all four pistons. So now we're gonna take the snap ring and just kind of put half of it in first and then work its way in. Which sometimes this is extremely difficult. So I finally got that little snap ring. This is what the setup looks like, which is pretty nice. Now that I got this one done, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to these three pistons and rods. Now we're gonna be fitting the crankshaft into the engine block. We're gonna start by turning the engine over, getting it upside down. So we already checked the mains with a mic and we are about anywhere from 0 0.0025 to 0 0.003, which is right under about three thousandths of an inch. Specifically why I wanted to build a 99 seven bolt that is a split thrust washer because these are the updated designs, which they are way better than the 95 through 96 versions, which uses a thrust washer, I'm sorry, it uses a thrust bearing, but it is a cradle style, which those tend to fail almost instantly. Look up crank walk and you'll see. Which those are notorious for going out. So when you set this in, just carefully make sure that you go, that you don't push a thrust washer out because, well, they always like to pop out. And this one popped out a little bit. So again, just put some lube on this side of the bearings as well. You don't want anything dry on startup. So on the ARP main studs, we have about 60 foot pounds of torque. We're gonna to torque them down in 20 pound increments with 20 pounds first, starting from the middle out. So now that the crank spins, very nice. So the next thing we're gonna check is what's called the crankshaft in play. That's called the thrust clearance. Now to test that, you need a dial indicator, which mine has a magnetic base, which is really, really nice. And I have it almost zeroed out. We're like plus one right now. and. Well, as you can see, when I pry it back just a hair, you want to pry it forward and backwards, 
and this dial indicator is going to move. That's going to tell you your thrust clearance. Now spec is anywhere from two to seven thousandths. And by looking at it, we're just under about six thousandths. It's a little bit too loose for me, but these that's how the thrust washers came. And honestly, there's really not much I can do about it without getting bigger thrust washers. But for now, I think it's going to be perfectly fine because we're still in that spec from two thousandths to seven thousandths. On the high side. We're gonna flip it over and I'm gonna be installing the pistons and the connecting rods onto the crank shafts. Now with these, we're actually gonna test the bearing clearance with what's called plastic gauge. So I usually use ATF to kind of lube up the cylinder walls before putting it in. You can use motor oil, but with the transmission fluid, it actually stays on the cylinder walls a little bit longer than motor oil does. And it's perfect for if you're gonna be letting your engine sit for a while. Obviously with this one, we're gonna go right at it, but just, you know, a fun fact. One more thing. So before taking off your connecting caps on your rods, 100% always make sure to mark them because if you don't, you get a mix match, you're gonna have a bad day. The bearing and the rod will probably seize up because you're using the wrong cap. So I usually take a permanent marker and I just kind of mark a line saying that that's the one for this side. And if you flop them 180 degrees, also it's not gonna sit perfect and it's gonna cause damage as well. So make sure you just mark it. So one more thing to note about most aftermarket racing pistons, and that's the majority of most pistons, they'll always have a direction. And on these Weiss goes, you'll see a little tiny dot right here, which that's the indication that it should be facing to the front of the engine block. And obviously we're with the number one piston because we made sure the end gap was for this cylinder and it's gonna be facing this way. So to install the pistons inside the block, you're gonna need what's called a piston ring compressor. And it's pretty much a giant clamp that goes over the piston rings to make sure that you don't damage the rings while installing them. So it's easy as putting it over and then just tightening it down. Make sure the journal on the crankshaft is facing downward so you don't hit it. So carefully put it in without scratching the cylinder walls and you should be okay. And then when you're ready, Give it a smack and it should go down nice and smooth. So the reason we put this on dry is because we're actually going to plastic gauge it and we're going to make sure it's within spec. Now we're looking anywhere from about two and a half to about three and a half thousandths of an inch. Anything within that spec I'll be perfectly fine, especially since it's aluminum connecting rods. I think it will be okay. Again, make sure your mark lines up with the connecting rod so you don't swap them and damage it. Now we're gonna torque it to spec. And then we're gonna take off the cap and see what the plastic gauge is at. So we went ahead and torqued everything down. We took the bolts off. We're gonna take the caps off now. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little tiny green smudge in here. And that green smudge is pretty much, we're gonna match up the thickness onto this plastic gauge chart and whatever it says, that kind of determines what the correct size is. And by looking at it, we're just under about three thousandths of an inch, which three thousandths on the bearing clearances for the rod bearings is perfectly within spec. So what we did with the first cylinder, we're gonna do with two, three, and four, and hopefully it gives us the same specs. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I worked on the rotating assembly last night until 1.30 in the morning. We got all the caps installed, all the rods and pistons are all, are all in. We got everything mic'd and plastic gauged. Everything is well within spec. We got about six thousandths of thrust clearance, which is, which is a little bit too much, but it will be perfectly fine. We don't plan on getting 100,000 miles out of this motor. So the next step is we're gonna be installing the balance shaft on the brand new oil pump because, well, our oil pump kind of like seized up. Yeah. <laughs> For those that remember in the last couple videos that I made, well, we kind of forgot to install this baffle plate. Well, guess what? I told you one day we're going to be installing it, and today's that day.
Now we got the ARP bolts installed on the studs. We're gonna torque them to 90 foot pounds. Now to do that, we're gonna torque them in three steps. We're gonna torque them one, all of them at 30 foot pounds, then do a next pass and do it at 60 foot pounds, another pass at the final 90 foot pounds. And remember, always start from the middle and work your way out. Okay. Whew. Yeah, that took a while. So there's not a whole lap that we gotta do in order to put the engine to the transmission and then we can put it back in the car. Just so you guys know, the transmission is a Jax 2.2 HD transmission with a welded center diff. Yep, that thing's welded, so we shouldn't break no center diffs. As of today, it is Sunday, so that means that we have exactly one week to get this thing done, and then we're gonna be taking it to IFO. Honestly, if everything goes like it should, I should be able to get this thing done, and we're gonna be racing it at IFO in less than one week. So if you guys wanna see the next video, we're gonna be installing the engine, and possibly, hopefully, we're gonna be doing the first startup. Uh, it should start. I'm. For the love of God, please start. <laughs> so go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe because next video we're gonna be installing the motor and hopefully we're gonna get a startup. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I just want you guys to understand something. This isn't what, this wasn't more or less like a how-to, it was more or less like how I do things. Now, I know something like this, you know, most people would never even try to do it. I remember 10 years ago, I would never even try to do something like this. And if you guys wanted to do something like this too, don't be afraid. All you have to do is just research and learn. The biggest reason why people don't do things in life is because they're afraid. Well, you overcome fear by getting knowledge and, oh God, this sounds like a freaking Ty Lopez video. <laughs> But seriously, the more you guys learn about something, the more confident you're gonna be, and the more you're gonna be able to tackle on something like this. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and hopefully you guys watch the next video of us installing it in the GSX, and hopefully doing our next startup. So just like that, I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you later, bye.